often with, with curved parts, people tend to freak out a little bit when it comes to the joinery. I'm here to tell you it's not as bad as all that. Um, one of the guiding principles for this is that you treat whatever you're working with, no matter how curvy, as if it's still a rectangle. Let's, let's look at this for a second. Let's say we're making a chair leg like this and the flat spot is right there. Um, certainly one of the things we could do would be to take a block of wood, line that up with the squared edge on that board, and then trace out and cut out the leg. Could even do the joinery on this before you get started. And that would make life a lot easier. The problem with that, although it works very well, is that it tends to be very wasteful of wood. Because I've got this piece on here, I've got room for another leg on this same board. And of course, that other leg is probably going into the same chair and they would match perfectly. I don't wanna let that go, let that match go to say nothing of throwing away all this wood. And this piece here, if I, um, I can't really straighten out this edge and create that because I've already cut away other things. So we need to come up with ways of creating the flat spot here that's so important for the joinery on this particular part on already curved pieces. So one way to do that is strictly with handwork. And I've laid out on my chair back here the flat spot, which is going between here and here. And the hand tool only technique for this is that we lay out an X from corner to corner of that flat area. And I'm gonna set this up between the dogs on my bench and I'm going to start planing at the center of this and try and take away starting in the middle of this and working my way out. And I'm gonna watch pretty carefully to make sure that I'm progressing down each of these legs of the X equally. Let me try this from the other direction. This seems like it's, that's better. This involves maintaining good pressure on the plane so that once I establish a little bit of a flat spot, I can hold that and then not disturbing that as I move forward. And I'm moving out a little bit unevenly. I'm gonna try and work my cor opposite corners a little better. Just about there. almost out to my lines here. And that takes out my lines and I've got a nice flat spot there. There's another way to do that that's not quite so hand tool and, and bit by bit reliant on, on your hand tool skills. I've created a little bit of a jig here. And essentially a piece of plywood and a block of solid wood on top, and this is a good 90 degree angle. What I'm gonna do is set this up here with my leg. I'm gonna clamp this in position. And now I've actually got a flat surface to reference here. So the back of my plane references off this and I can plane off that same area. So before I did this, I set these stops for this particular piece to leave this area as the high spot above this surface here. I'm mostly gonna keep my plane angled forward like this so that it's cutting over the leg and the back of the plane registers on this surface. Okay. 
So that's another good way to get this. But I've got one more for you that works very well and has an advantage in that I can also do the joinery. This involves going to a router and I'm going to add to this jig a little plate here. And again, this is at 90 degrees to the leg. And what I can do is route this surface now. If I just set the depth stop so that it just skims that surface, I will get a perfect flat spot there. I'm going to route this as a climb cut around the outside of this to avoid any blowout, but basically this works very nicely here. Now the beauty of this is that I don't even really need to change setups um, in order to route the mortise in this piece. All I need to do is add a router, an edge guide fence here, and I would spend a moment laying out where my mortise would actually go here. And then I can take this and just plunge route the mortise that I'm about to do here. It would be very easy to add stops to control the travel, just screw down a plate here and here. Um, you can certainly do that if you want. I just tend to go by pencil line. It works very well for me, um, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily the answer there. And depth of cut, whatever you want. This leaves a very nice smooth mortise. You'll notice that I went in very small increments. I've just basically pushed down about a sixteenth of an inch at a time between each pass there. And that's one of the factors that leads to such a clean wall in this mortise. I've got one more interesting way of dealing with complex joinery on a curve to show you. So on this sort of mock-up leg here, I've got mortises here and here on very different sections of the leg. And so what I've done is I've made up a template here that will register and this will work in conjunction with the router and a guide bushing. And it places these, this is just bumping up from there, it places this guide directly over the spots that I need. And then with the right size half inch template guide bushing here, I can route an exact size mortise there. The real fun of this comes, of course, the opposite leg for this needs to go have those joints on the other side. And that works perfectly here, just like that. 